My name is John Geltz. I'm a fifth year graduate student here in chemistry and biochemistry at UCSD. I'm in uh, Professor Cliff Kubiak's lab and we all work on electron transfer in one way or another. So I work on the fundamentals of how nature pushes energy and charge around and about half of our group tries to apply that to CO2 chemistry to try and activate what is right now a byproduct of burning fuel. The funny thing about my research is that it's very fundamental and very, very physical and you get wrapped up in a lot of equations and I do a lot of spectroscopy, so watching the way light interacts with matter and trying to fit a lot of equations to the stuff that we see uh, to see how nature actually uses this in photosynthesis and to see how we can use it in converting CO2 into a liquid fuel, which is the ultimate goal for a lot of people and definitely half of our lab is working real hard on that. I was working with Rachel Stein at Castle Park High School and it was a lot of fun. She's been teaching for about six years and really has it down pat. And so I was able to sub in very easily into her uh, curriculum as she laid it out for the year. So I could jump in and give a lesson on electron transfer or, or give a lesson on density or whatever and it would flow very smoothly back and forth. We had a very good interplay in the classroom. In chemistry, a lot of us get into it because we like starting fires and we like pretty colors and the chemistry students in high school are no exception. We do a lot of things that start miniature controlled, controlled burns uh, to, as a sort of engagement activity and right away the, you have everyone's attention as soon as there's a pop or a flash or a flame and they always put that as their favorite part. And yet, by the end of the activity, they also understand the fundamentals of why it burned or why it didn't burn. And students responded really well. I mean, first off, it's easy to see they're having a lot of fun playing with plastics as opposed to manipulating numbers on a worksheet. Uh, and then by the end, we usually give them an exit quiz or some sort of evaluation after they've done some sort of lab activity, and it comes out really well. A lot of them do better than they did on some sort of pre-evaluation. It's really changed the way that I talk to people and the way I'll orchestrate a talk. As a graduate student, you get kind of used to giving PowerPoint talks, and it's very linear, which is fine, and it's good for an audience that doesn't have to write everything down. But the funny thing is when you go back to high school, you realize you're still talking and they're writing down something you said five minutes ago. So it really makes you pay very close attention to who's listening and what everyone is getting, which I think is useful in really any situation. One of the really cool things about the program that I don't think we realized when we started, or that I didn't realize when we started, is that you, it's sort of bigger than you. So I come up with an activity and implement it in the high school classroom, but then other teachers start asking for that. And all around, I implemented uh, one of another fellow, Andro's activities about smelling molecules. Uh, just after he did it in a biology classroom, I did it in a chemistry classroom, and then all of a sudden, chemistry and biology teachers from all around our, both of our schools and other schools are asking for this activity. Yeah, Socrates is a, is a great program for a grad student. You really think about your research in a way that you haven't so far. You think about it, tr traditionally in graduate school, you think about how can I publish a paper, how can I graduate, how can I tell it to other graduate students and other professors, but you really don't frequently think about the ramifications of your work. So if you do chemistry of CO2, a lot of people can understand why you're doing that, but if you understand, you know, if you study the fundamental physics of electron transfer, it might be harder to explain to your grandmother why that's important, why NSF is paying you to do that. And so it's really good, it makes you think about why you're doing what you're doing and how you can tell that to everyone.